in stands. Is it? You you buy those at UCAR. At UCAR, okay. You can buy, so you can buy those stands at UCAR, and then you just right. got your sign uh, sign made with a correct with a okay. the picture and everything else. Yeah, I've had them made at all different kinds of places. Uh, build a sign online. Um, re most recently, this is from Goody Signs at a Draper. Mm -hmm. um, even if you didn't have the signs, you could use the generic open house signs. I'm a big believer in getting balloons on it because I think it makes it stand out. Um, but they followed them in. One of my very first sales was from a lady who followed it in from Walmart. They, her and her husband had been recently married, owned a condo in Springville, Albus. And uh, she decided to come over and see it. And that was a Peter Morco listing. And she goes, but we have to sell our condo. And so I called Peter and said, would you consider a contingent offer? And he goes, yes, I would. So I, I represented her, wrote it up. They ended up buying a different house though, a couple days later. But then I got to list their condo too. So that was really cool. So I got both sides and they have since referred somebody to me. And I go, Greg and I are, are pretty lucky with getting, we have a listing and getting both sides. Gotcha. You or, like that sign. Why isn't this? You like that sign holder, Greg? What do you want to do? You no, know, you just push this, he said. I did. And it ain't working. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go. Hit, which, which button? The arrow? Yeah, arrow. That's what I just hit. Yeah, I actually, years and years ago, sold my own home. And when there I did go. that, this was in 2006 or something. But anyway, when I used balloons, it was always much more effective. It's so, amazing that the, you can have two or three open house signs or other signs for local events or whatever on the same corner, the one with the balloons the one on the, the people balloons. see. And I, I'll tell you, I didn't believe it at first. I really didn't. I, I, I argued a little bit with Colleen about when we started working together. Oh, do we really need to get these? And part of my problem was is I didn't, if it was windy, my balloons are going up in the sky and everything going all over the place. Well, and I can but tell I'm you, a believer. I'm if a believer. it's windy and you have this much string on your balloons, they're going to go like this down. and nobody's going to yeah. see them. Yeah. So you tie them super, super tight on top of the sign and they won't blow anywhere. I mean, right. just sit there. That's a good idea. Well, listen, we probably ought to follow the outline a little bit here and we'll just, uh, We'll just give you anecdotes as we go along. Uh, just so you know, Colleen uh, has been in the business for four and a half years, uh, super successful. I uh, lived in uh, Southern California. My wife passed away. I moved up here to retire. Didn't like retirement. Colleen's sister and I were friends, and we got introduced. And and I just, and, and and I was in the process of getting a license. And so we decided to team up. We are team call first realty, two, two whole people on our team and we share and share alike. And it's been a wonderful thus far relationship, very symbiotic. We both bring, um, I grew up, even though we raised our family in California, lived there for 40 years. I grew up here and I have a large network of family and friends. And so I was able to get started off of my SOI. Uh, basically. And so uh, we've been together for two and a half years. Um, so far this year, we've closed 18 deals and we'll talk about those. Uh, how many of them came from uh, open houses and how many of them were double-sided, which has been really successful for us. And so we'll go, we'll go through all that with you today. Um, so the first slide we're supposed to show you is nothing. Well, if you don't get that little square up there, it's not going to be no. Oh, what's that? Where'd that come from? It's got it. It's got it. It's not on my screen, but maybe oh. it's on that screen. It's just got it is not on my screen. Can you move it? Yeah. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, it's underneath it. Oh. Yeah. You can just turn the laptop around when I'm looking at the laptop. We don't have to use the big screen. I'll go get him to turn. Okay. Yeah, he's just right upstairs. He'll come to it. So she the, loves our cookies if you like the cookies. She says oh. they're her famous chocolate chip cookies. Oh, as opposed to her infamous chocolate chip. Maybe she made them herself. Oh, I was watching this morning. The Queen's, uh, I'm so glad she died in Scotland because they had all these neat things planned in Scotland. And I have been in Holyrood House in those very rooms and walked. Oh, good there job. You go have walked the Queen's Mile and have been in St. Giles Church. And so I was watching that this morning. It was so cool to bring back all those memories. What an incredible thing. Nothing else about your business will have as big an impact on it as the number of leads you have. We got it. We're good. 
Oh, we just wanted you to go up and down the stairs. No, perfect. Get my steps up. Yes. Why? Why do we? Why do you think we begin the session with that quote? Kind of just show importance of leaves, and this is a way we could get leads. Yeah, the number one job is to get leads. There's a saying: leaders are lasters. If you if you're if you got leads, then of course you you are going to be successful because leads lead to more business. It's as simple as that. Calling it's a can, numbers. Yep, that's a numbers game, and uh, and so one way to impact the number of leads that you have is an open house. So the two goals of an open house are very simply to sell the house. That's why I have the open house. But the other one is to capture leads. And so it, it, we were just looking this morning, what was it, four different deals off of one lead from an open house that we held. So that, that really is the bottom line. Uh, and you can capture buyer leads or seller leads from open houses. It's yeah. just, just amazing. You know, my... my uh... When I first started, um, I worked just for three months on Edge Fisher's Cream. And the, the expectation for me that was given to me that I, I, I came to believe is that you would get leads, you'll get some buyer brokers signed at every open house. And that put a lot of pressure on me. Um, it takes away your sparkle. And the whole thing on an open house that makes it successful is the connection. Don't put any pressure on yourself. Uh, I was running the numbers with him this morning. Out of my 13 deals I did last year, I mean, my first year here, I would say I was doing open houses at least two times a month, maybe three. Uh, if the person whose listing it was was doing open house on Friday, I'd be on Saturday, I'd do it on Friday. Okay. Um, I would just, I would find myself something to do on the weekend that was open house. So that means if I did 13, and let's just say I did two a month, then it was less than 50% where I walked away without anything. If I took Sheila, Sheila always walked away with a lead because she can refinance somebody or get them to give them a lower interest rate. And she pretty much always walked away with something. But And nurtured those leads for us. But yes, well, then that, that's a whole different thing that she'll go into here in just right. a minute for you, which is a lot. <laughs> she brought quite a few, has brought quite a few leads back to us a year later because they need to work on their credit or just somebody she's met at an open house. But I'm sure she, she has her numbers for that. It's, it equates to a lot of money. So uh, developing a relationship with a lender who can go and do open houses with you is in my opinion, absolutely the most important thing. Um, even if your Dynamo lender can't go with you, any lender with you, and I'll tell you why. Again, it's the connection. People go to open houses, a lot of them go to a lot of open houses, so they're going to go to several, two or three that day. And they're going to walk in and they kind of got this armor on when they first walk through the door because everybody's trying to make them their client. And so I usually, Greg's really good about it too, just be, you know, introduce yourself and, you know, and see, see if they found you from the signs. If they found you from the signs and they don't know anything about the house. Mm -hmm. So they're going to need a little bit more information. But if they found you online, they know the pictures, they know the house, they're interested in it. They've read the MLS. Let them go see it. We, if possible, will, will stay in the kitchen. People will almost always come back to the kitchen for some reason. They'll have a question. They want to say goodbye. Because we've been very nice to them. Um, although... I don't like to be in the kitchen or even in the living room in the houses if they're looking at it for the first time. Try to stay out of their line of sight. Something very uncomfortable for people if they're standing, standing right where they're trying to look. They won't look, they won't connect. And really that's what it's all about. It's an emotional connection for everybody when they find their house. Yeah. So I, I really like what you said there. This is a natural process. In other words, this isn't something you gotta memorize 10 scripts on all that kind of a thing, just be yourself. Colleen's really good at when they walk in, she'll say, how did you find us today? And they'll say, well, like utahrealestate.com or if they're with an agent, then you totally back off, of course. But uh, if, if they say, uh, gosh, we saw your signs, we're just driving around looking or whatever, then you know how you're gonna handle these people. Well, and, and I then, brought I guess, some <laughs> just reach the, just reach the, top, the top one is the one I like to use, but you can use any of these or any other ones you find online. Those, if you send me an email today, I'll send you the link for them. KW has those put out. It's like a seven page document. The one I use is I think page seven. 
Um, I, I fluctuate whether I like to use these things or not. I make her use them most of the time. Right? There's one reason to use them, and it is? Well, for Sheila's check mark. Sheila likes to get their information you know, right away. I'm not a good follower up on this. If they don't tell me they want to use me or they want to be my friend or something, yeah. I never call off my sheet ever again. So see, that's where I stopped using the value of it. But well, we've just now, four years in, we just now recently figured out if we would just have them put their name on here at least and check this box, I know whether or not to really try to connect to them or not. If they've got an agent, they already said they do. We're not supposed to really, unless they ask you questions. Yeah. We be trying to do anything. We're not supposed to negotiate it anyway. Yeah. The other thing I think is really important, and again, was just a light bulb that went off just recently for me, is we're representing that house. We're trying to sell that house. And we've actually gotten a lot more listing appointments lately from our open houses, which is something new. But it's because I think I changed. It's my a mindset, mindset change. And, and we both disagreed as we went through this, frankly, where it says you're supposed to have them. How many, before the open house, set a goal. How many listings or how many uh, opportunities, as we say in KW, am I going to get off of this listing? And and no, Colleen is 100% right. And it's, you know, when we when she brought this to my attention earlier this year, we talked about it. It really was a change of mindset for us. We're saying, well, we're not we're not here to pick up deals. We're here to sell this house to represent this home the best possible way that we can. And guess what? We've increased the number of opportunities that we get off of those houses so to be fair to the buying agent that maybe you're working with the buyer's agent or i mean the seller's agent that you're working with to represent that house that's what you're there for and the other will come and so the idea of i'm going to get 10 listings or, or 10 new clients out of this house you know that well, you that, know then, then you're not natural how many people are going to come too that's right i mean there's some times where you can advertise it to the hilt and for some reason you get three people through the door and there's other times when there's 15 you know so setting yeah. yourself unrealistic goals goals is going to get real frustrating and then you're going to start talking to people that you shouldn't be talking to many people who are represented yeah. Well, I, I, I just change, loses your sparkle again. You have to have a great mindset. Yeah. Even the days I've sat through open houses that nobody came. Mm -hmm. And I've also sat, my very first sale was a new build. It was a new construction. And I was on Angie's team and she asked me to sit there. And so I put out my open house signs just like it was a regular open house. Did that twice, by the way, on her team. And I took, I used to put out 20 signs. I took them out for miles. And first day, nothing sat there there was no furniture in this house sat in the front room staring out the front window on the carpet on the ground <laughs> i was so depressed at the end of that i didn't have my lender with me at least if you have your window you have someone to talk to it makes it even better <laughs> all right that's how i got to know she so well <laughs> second second week in a row she asked me to do it again and i think we had one person come through third week she asked me to do it again i'm thinking it took it takes me almost two hours to put out 20 slides never mind the cost of the balloons and one family came through, and at the very end of the day, this other family came through. They had been with a realtor all day looking for houses. I didn't know that. They followed my signs in. They loved the house. They walked around, they came back to me, which is generally how this works. And they say, how do I write an offer? I love this house. Mm -hmm. Well, do you have an agent? They said, no. But we want to be unrepresented. Do you realize when somebody signs a listing agreement, they are promising to pay the brokerage, the total amount. Whether or not there's a buyer's agent, they still pay the total amount. So it really doesn't matter when a person wants to be unrepresented, which this person did. So uh, Angie actually wrote up the contract because it was her listing and we got a sale out of that. So that was three weeks with a total probably of three people that came through. But that one on the th week number three was my very first commission, commission check. And that was four years ago and it was a $700,000 house. So I tell myself that a lot when we're sitting in them and there's nobody coming through. It just takes one. This this may be in the book and I'm probably jumping ahead. But I've already got questions about stuff like how many signs do you put out? Like, for example, and how far? I mean, it, common sense, put them on the busiest street to yeah. lead them in the right directions. Right. And then also, since you have cookies here, do you do like little things that warm and we do? We'll, we'll, like we'll, we'll come to that. Come to that. We one. do. We do. Okay. We do. And then my other question might be in this too is like pre planning and planning what to do with when you're talking to an owner. 
and you're going to have an open house, what are kind of the things to tell them like, okay, here's what the house needs to look like, and this is what we want you to do with this or that, because I'm sure they're... Well, I guess we will get into that today, maybe. But uh, well, it, it depends if it's your listing or not. If you're doing somebody else's listing, then you're just going to show yeah, up. you're just going to show up. Right, right now, we're talking about somebody else's somebody listing, else's but we got a lot lot of time if you want to talk about it's probably what we'll talk about if you're representing the listing too because we do all kinds of you know stuff and even if it's somebody that. else's listing you can ask them if it's if they if they've done not the neighborhood i don't think i've ever had anybody tell me they have so then you're we welcome to go door knock the neighborhood. Did you bring any brochures for us? So when you door knock your neighborhood, you're just kind of like, hey, we're having an open house. Do you guys want to come over and see it? My, my favorite line is. Or do you know anybody that's, that would be interested and, and you know, send pretty, them over? Um, my, my favorite line I use, and I do a lot of knocking on our on ours, is I say, hey, we're selling the house down around the corner. This is your opportunity to pick your own neighbors. Mm -hmm. People laugh. And, you know, that starts a conversation. Yeah. So the nice thing about door, door knocking yeah. for an open house is it's not a, it's not a like do you. There's a reason for you to be doing right. that. Right. <laughs> I you had know one, what you're trying to say. I had one lady that uh, she goes, did you not see the notice of listening sign on the door? I was door knocking for an open house inviting, and I said I'm not trying to sell you anything. I thought maybe you'd like to come and see your neighbor's house. Um, holding an open house, she still didn't care. Just slammed the door in my face. And you know that kind of will get you. At least it did to me for a while. I was scared of those no soliciting signs, but I can tell you, I have invited a lot of people to open houses with soliciting signs, and nobody else said. That. Having been a missionary, it doesn't scare me at all. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, these I made on just the KW website. These are my first year, and I'm sure I have bazillions of these because I'm like I said, I did them all the time. None of these are my listings. These all belong to somebody else. These are their pictures. The really cool thing, now you notice that it doesn't say any agent's name on here, but mine. The really cool thing about working at KW Westfield is these listings belong to the brokerage. So you can put it on your Facebook page. You can put it on anywhere you want, KSL. So when someone else is listening, you can go ahead and make an open house sign, not door knock the neighborhood and just remind people we're having an open house. Hand this out that has your name and phone number on it. Or this one, this, I tried to get the color version. So you're just gonna have to use your imagination. But we use this one a lot too when we do this together. And this is all colored. And as long as I have the MLS number. Okay, this looks so much better for you. Oh, thank you. Look, you have one. I was at my office like eight o'clock this morning waiting for someone to show up. I love that. If you one. use a lender to do your open house with you, have, look, it says iPro. Yes. Have them ask them to make brochures for you because they get to be on the back side. Guess what? Mm -hmm. And they print the brochures for you. <laughs> I was going to ask you so, like in prep time, let's just say, you know, on Slack, someone says, I'm doing an open house. Anyone want to show it for me? And how much lead time do you kind of get to kind of get prepared to like print out brochures or, or that kind of stuff? You know, do you belong to the KW Facebook page? Yes. Okay. I see those in there. Somebody asking somebody to do their open houses. Sometimes there are no, there's no lead time on it. It's like the day before. Yeah. Which is really a bummer because it, it takes away that chance for you to make connections with people on Facebook and different groups because they have a Facebook open house group. They have, like, if it's going to be in Saratoga Springs, you can go into the Saratoga Springs yard sale group. That's where I've gotten leads from a lot. Um, so that's a bummer. You're not going to have a lot of lead time, but hopefully they're going to connect contact you a day or you're going to contact them i would be looking for an open house for the weekend by wednesday so that way you can talk to a lender and they can make your brochures and you can go door knocking we've got this one. Uh, yes. or anyone well <laughs> let me tell you so I, you have these probably the backs of yours ready to go and you if because so, that's the one thing I, i'm okay y'all have fears so my fear is okay I take too long to try to make everything perfect, you know, on the other side that what your side would be. But okay, if so you had someone one, helping me, that would be like, oh, that's. No, we have a whole marketing department that does these. So all I need is the MLS number because the pictures are already on the MLS. All the info is already on the MLS. This design is already, already done, right? So I. And Greg and Colleen, now I have their information. I have their pictures. My marketing department has their information. So all I have to say is MLS number, da da da, Greg and Colleen. Boom, I have a flyer printed out, right? I have to have about a day's notice 
I mean, so if you can tell me on Thursday, I can have them Friday. Um, but you don't have to do anything. That's the beauty of it, right? And going back to their signs, um, Greg and Colleen, Colleen has now Greg does it because Colleen was doing it, put out a zillion signs, okay? Um, it makes a difference for what the other thing that I think makes a big difference with all their signs is I've been to open houses where there's like nothing, you know, it's like I barely know where to go and I have the address, you know, it just like doesn't even look like they're putting any effort into it at all. So if you're someone walking into an open house and you need to sell your house, do you think you're going to use the person that put up hokey dokey no sign effort. up in the yeah. no effort at all? Or do you think you're going to put choose somebody that has signs everywhere and balloons up and maybe a little treat or, you know, whatever. We did talk about treats. We don't usually do cookies and stuff anymore because it gets messy. So crumbs all over the house. Yeah, they've gone to maybe just like nice chocolate, chocolate or a dog, candy dog or dog chocolates or something yeah, like something like that. Which is and drinks. Yeah, we used to go big time, but now it's just water. I mean, drink. Well, we bought that cooler. Depends on. Well, that's for our big our over money for for for, for, for our our house. Yeah. Yeah, just I just throw some water bottles up on the counter and a, a bowl of nice chocolates, anything that's covered with plastic. Since COVID, we stopped doing we stopped doing cookies right off the bat. I mean, within a yeah. few months. Like, Wait a second, this is making a mess. We were cleaning the floors. <laughs> <laughs> None of the cookies. I mean, look at the table right now. <laughs> yeah. I I want to look at number three there. Number one, we've already talked about what to do. Just you know, talk to the other agents, get on the KW Open House website, offer your services. Oh, wait, 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 before we get past that one. Um, I don't have a listing to hold open. Another good way to find open houses is, do you know how to set up searches on the Utah real estate? Set up a listing alert? Oh, no. Okay, when you go to Utah real estate and you put in a search for any parameters, mm -hmm. you know, like if you wanna watch houses in Provo or you have a client, you can also set up one on just KW Westfield offices. It's one of the criteria. Oh, nice. Put that in there for this office and have it send an express alert to you. And you're going to know of everybody who puts a listing out of this office online. And you can look at their listing and see if it says an open house. If it doesn't, there's a good chance they weren't they aren't going to do one. And then you, that's really big deal. You can offer to do it. Yeah. Or even if they're doing an open house, mark it on your calendar for the next week and see if it's still available. Very few agents do a second open house. Mm -hmm. That's another one to pick up for them. See what their traffic was like. The signs again, at least six signs. I think the least we've ever done is nine this year. Yeah, we well, just did not at Calabusos. Saying, but yeah. at, at least yeah, six yeah, signs. Yeah, yeah. Out of my eight open house sales, just my first year, five of them came off the signs. They were not people that were on the internet. Some of the people were looking. They just happen to see the signs and decide to come look at this one. Mm -hmm. um, some of those, Sheila brought back a long time later because they weren't ready to buy right now with their credit or whatever. They were just looking loose and she stuck with them so hard. And then she would call back cold hearts. She, I actually, uh, we went to the same church together and I had a relationship with her. She called me and she goes, do you know that in a cold, cold harps? And I, no. She goes, well, you should. <laughs> this is your lead because she marks it. As soon as she connects with somebody like at the open house with you, she'll mark it to you. And when they come back and they're ready, she sends them back to you. She brings them, rounds them back as best as possible. I can't imagine somebody ever said, I don't no, want to use the agent. You never had that happen? Oh, no, not with you guys. <laughs> and uh, I, I really did it. I had to look at my phone and then I had it tagged in my phone that I knew who of them. And I've gotten two deals now from that family, actually three maybe. So another reason to use Bureau of Chula for sure. Okay, carry on. What were you gonna say? Sorry. Uh, number three, I may not, well, signs we've talked about, you know how to get them, right? Number three, I may not know the answer to question visitors have. You owe it to the home and to the agent you're representing, the sellers you're representing. Have the MLS sheet printed out. You just do the um uh, Customer. Customer full report. Client full report. Client do, do the button that says client full report. Have those printed out for people, but you need to know what's on that sheet too. I now, there phone. are always questions that you cannot answer. 
And so we try to have the seller available to answer questions, either by a text or a phone call or whatever. Somebody's going to ask you a question about the water heater or the roof or something. And so it's really a good idea to have the seller connected, if possible, while you're doing the open house. Mm -hmm. but, but go through that MLS sheet yourself. Walk through the house. Let's see, five bedrooms only counted four. Let me go find the other one. You know, I mean, whatever, be, be totally familiar with the home, both by the walkthrough and what the agent has put on the MLS sheet and print out the client full report and have them to give to people. If they're, if they're with the real estate agent, then of course you don't need to do that. But if they're not, then that's a very helpful thing for people to have that with them as they walk through the house. I can't tell you the difference between these two. If you don't know the answer to something, don't worry about it. I mean, don't, and don't worry make it up. That's your, you know what I mean? That, oh my gosh, I didn't know the answer. You cannot know the whole answer to every single house you ever go in, right? Yeah. That's why Greg and Colleen just go, oh, you know what? We don't know the answer to that. Let's find out. Mm -hmm. And then they find out. Whereas other agents that I sit with, and um, they, they don't even know half the stuff about the house. I end up going and finding out the stuff about the house. If, you know, I mean, it's just be prepared, yeah. you know? But it's a good idea ahead of time to ask, and I've learned this the hard way, how old's the roof? How old's the HVAC system? Uh, how old's the sprinkler system? I mean, you know, just, just get some of that information in your head already. Well, and if you're doing somebody else's listing, ask the agent if you want them to text, if that agent wants you to text them the answers to the open house questions, mm -hmm. or they want to give you the owners. And it'll be up to the agent. Oh, okay. Somebody, so ask the agent how you want sure. to communicate with the owners. owners. Yeah. Yeah. And owners they, are ha owners want to sell the house. They're yeah. happy to give you information. A lot of the agents are going to want it to go through them. They just are. Okay. Um, they just want to feel that protects until they probably get to know you and trust you with their open house. Yeah. They're going to want it to come through them. But again, and and if they, I just get the people's phone number. I don't care if it's an agent, a client with an agent. And I don't use that phone number for any other reason other than answering this question once I get the answer. Because sometimes, especially with the agents, they're not going to get back to you until the open house is over. Um, so then you just you just watch your phone that day and send off the information. It There's nothing better in this business than the relationship you're going to have with other agents. And that you're going to have that in your thread. So two years from now, when you go to make an offer on a house and it has multiple offers, that same thread from that open house is going to pop up in their thread and your thread. And if you say cute little things back and forth to them, they're going to go, oh, I like this person. And, you know, it's the darnest things that makes a difference in multiple offer situations when the offers are the same. Who do they want to work with? Yeah, well, I had a good experience working with you on a past deal once. So anybody you can yeah. grab that phone number for, make sure you follow up. If somebody doesn't give you an answer within, you know, a, a couple hours, I'd follow up on it again and say, you know, again, how, many, how deep was the pool? You'll be shocked how many weird questions people will ask. Let's see, I think. The is the pool. I, I, okay, we, we know, uh, the, oh, oh, we know the answer to this one. So what with and went to the garage. I mean, great ran and bought a tape measure recently. <laughs> but you know why? Because we were double siding it. This was his new client. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay, again, this so much of this is just common sense. Uh, open houses, inexpensive. That's right. Your prospect to your high R ROI and you get the qualified leads. Skip, skip, so what do skip. you guys, yeah, that's right. We went through okay, any ahas so far? Oh, lots. I mean, <laughs> so far, I've made lots of great notes. Okay. So it's been awesome. Please tell me your name again, I'm sorry. Catherine. Catherine, I'll remember now. Well, how about you? Yeah, there's many of these little things that I've learned over the course. Have you, have you guys both done open houses? No. I've done two. Two, mm -hmm. and what was your success with them? Um, so the first one, three groups came in and there's like one kind of lead, but her brother was kind of looking for a house, but nothing really came out. And then the next one, nine came. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I did uh, two open houses just a few weeks ago, right next to each other. One open house, one home was overpriced. We're, we're representing the seller in both cases, but we couldn't talk to the seller, you know who it is in the first one, to be realistic about his price. But he wanted a long open house. So I sat there from, got all the signs out, sat there from 11 in the morning until six in the evening. Not one single person came. 
The second house, we priced it correctly. Our theory is oh, we were here the for the first pricing, just so we're clear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, this, <laughs> this one was on a cruise. <laughs> the, 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 no, this is an unusual situation. <laughs> it, it, we're dealing very unusual. Very unusual. Uh, and, and, and in fact, Sheila's done all the, the uh, lending on, on these homes as well. So, but the second one, we priced it right. Man, you couldn't, you couldn't hardly move. I mean, that place was absolutely jammed from start to finish. And picked up an unrepresented buyer so we did the thing where she represented the seller i represent the buyer we got both sides of the deal so yeah it happens but even that being said you could have everything perfect i mean yeah. we, we we had a house up in woodland hills we did a usually i mean my listings first go live we'll plan open houses on friday afternoon saturday morning it's just what i always do um we had two weekends in a row of those we did four open houses and not a single person other than the neighbors came through that house. We didn't get a single showing till day 11. So sometimes there's anomalies and it sold full price on day 11. Yeah, part of the problem is people, nobody knows where Woodland Hills is. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, I, I've done really good, low priced houses and there was a BYU game. But I mean, there's still people who aren't watching the BYU game, but who knows why. Well, and then, then sometimes we think, well, it's, it's Memorial Day nobody's going to come and guess what sometimes nobody comes sometimes, sometimes they everybody do. does sometimes they do there's no bad time so there's yeah it's it's anybody not. ever 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 tell you that and we've closed between christmas and new year uh i got oh, one last slide i think one important thing to note is that it said qualified borrowers or qualified leads or something like that or anyway what i find at open houses now one more okay qualified leads okay you know, you could call people on the phone all day long, right? Half of them are nowhere near even ready to buy a house, right? You go in an open house, every single person that comes in that door wants to buy a house, or at least there is an inkling in their head about it yep. because they're looking at places, right? So all of a sudden you have all of these people that you've never met before that have this inkling in their head, at least that they're going to buy a house. I mean, where do you get that set of leads from anywhere else? You know, you can't. You can call your SOI all day long, which you should, right? But but you're not going to get get those same kind of buyers coming in like you will. In yeah, the NAR statistics are 51% of buyers research through open houses. Half the people who buy a home do their research through open houses. But now, they may also do it online, but they come to an open house physically. Yeah. To Sheila's point. Do you remember some of those people have a real estate agent in their pocket that's their friend or their whatever? Um, a lot of them, they, they just, there's a lot of people here in Utah that want to be unrepresented. So a lot of them, there's so many of them that you're not going to, they're not going to connect to you. Yeah. Just be, you be polite to them and have it, and you just never know. Yeah. You just never know what's going to happen, but don't have the expectation, honestly, that everyone's going to be at least half art. Yeah. And maybe you'll go on a run and they will all be, you know, that, and that would be really cool. But I just, I wish somebody had told me that because I would have done more open houses. I would have been more yeah. than, well, we, Sheila and I still, she, <laughs> Colleen and I still shake our heads at agents who list a house and don't do an open house. We've never not done an open house ever. This year, we've uh, all the way from $160,000 manufactured home to a $3.65 million house. We've sold uh, that, that's our range this year 160 to 3.65. That's part we've of done your, open house on every one, every listing you have. You yeah, every listing we've never not done. Well, an open house. there yeah. will be, there will be one soon that will not do, but it's a porter house, so I'm not going to do an open house on that one. But that'll be my first one. Ever. What house? The hoarder house. Oh, the hoarder house. Not the <laughs> I thought you said a hoarder <laughs> We can't do one on that either. <laughs> I'll handle that one. So anyway, okay. Greg, right. it looks like someone joined. Kason. Hi, Kason. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Hello. <laughs> when did you come on? Uh, I came on like 20, 30 minutes ago. Okay. Well, listen, we're, we're just... We're not real formal here. We're, we're trying to dump a, all of our experience on you in one class here. So any questions or thoughts, please jump in, okay? Awesome, for sure. Thank you. Jason, how long have you been selling real estate? Um, a few months, three months. Very good. 
All right, thanks for coming back to that, Sheila. That was a good point. Here's the set goals thing that we're we're saying: be go with the flow, be natural, yeah. prepare and practice. That's part of knowing the house, knowing your MLS sheet, yeah, being prepared to answer questions. About, yeah, yeah. You guys answered it by saying having that MLS sheet. Right. You talked about the flyer. Yeah. Pick the time, well, as, as Colleen said, we like to do Friday afternoon, evening, and Saturdays. So that, that's a question I was, so one of your listings wanted um, an all day thing, nine to six. Is that well, it's the only time that's ever happened. And we did it because of a long-term relationship yeah. with these people. That, what is the typical? We do uh, usually about four to seven on Friday and uh, 11 to two on Saturday. Okay. But keep in mind that most of the people come at, at uh, 155. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, never, that, that's really to good. Two on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, but. And everyone comes right just before 155. Two. That's right. <laughs> now they come at two. As you turned off all the lights. Uh, that's you're right. You're ready to lock, lock the door. The door. Well, I guarantee you somebody's going to walk up. And I sold to the person at five after two. Yeah. So yeah. never close early is my. Story. Every one of these three things do not apply to us here in Utah Valley. Is we don't do a happy hour. We don't. Somewhere where people were aware of the open house times. Usually. It should go on to the MLS and the remarks, and then they should do an open house thing um, okay. at the MLS on the listing thing. And if you're in particular, if you're doing it for someone, ask them to update the remarks on the open on the listing. Okay. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Because if it's not advertised, you really. I mean, yeah, you got it. We always put the hours on it. You want that could make people mad, you yeah. know, like saying open house, but I got there and nobody's there. Well, and key and have the mindset that I mean, we laugh about it, but you know, uh, open the home that we're representing right now uh, it was eleven to two, and we were there at what four thirty the other day, a couple of Saturdays ago. So you yeah, know, people just are there. I mean, you're, you're there. I mean, you're, yeah, you're not. Uh, you, know, you want them to come. I mean, yeah. if, if the car pulls up, be excited about it. Don't say, oh, signs geez, for a minimum home. of an hour. You do not want to grab those signs. You still got people coming. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. And if it's two people, you pick up the signs from the furthest out in so that people are still. <laughs> okay. So, do you guys have this out, your Utah real estate on your phone? Yeah. Okay. So, if you'll open up your app, this is my very favorite thing to do. And I don't know a neighborhood because it's not my listing. So go the day before. Always go the day before your open house. Drive the neighborhood. Okay. You want to know if there's a park right by it or you know, you're on a busy street. You can even plan your signs. And you just way. open this with that to see if there's parks and stuff. Nearby for sale. Okay. Nearby for sale. That's gonna that's your market research right there. So then nearby for sale, I would filter it and tell yourself the under contract too. So you have to filter active the, under contract up on the top right of the screen, yeah. add under contract, click done, apply. Where is the uh, right there on the top right, all the way top. Yep, filter. I'm on the filter. Oh, sorry. Right there. Oh, okay. You just add under contract. Oh, okay. Now apply active it. Under contract. Yep. Apply it and then open back up your screen and then find where you are. So, so you'll be sitting in front of your the house you're gonna hold open. And now you're not gonna be you could go actually, they used to do this a long time ago in real estate where you'd go preview all the other houses. Very confusing. Look at the yeah. pictures. Now open up each one that's close to that house and check out the pictures, see how it compares to your house that you're doing. It's gonna help you for two reasons. It's gonna give you something to talk about if they bring up any other houses in the neighborhood, this house may not be a fit for somebody. Oh, I wish it had so many bedrooms. If you know where the next closest house in that price point is, but you know what? There's a house three blocks down that does have that many bedrooms. Have that in your notes because you're going to carry your, I wish I brought MLS sheets. You're going to carry your MLS sheet in your pocket to answer questions. Have it written on the back of it so you know. And then try to make a point with them after the open house to go show them something. Once the person has made it clear that this is not the right house for them, they don't have an agent. Now you want to connect. The world's your oyster. <laughs> and the best thing you can do is find out from them if you could send them houses the second they come on the market, because really good houses generally sell right away when they come on the market. So it's important for them to know about them. A lot of people will let you have their information at that point and say, sure. 
best thing you do at that point is make sure you send them something tomorrow or the next day. Because if you do that, and if you can show them something, you could now have a new client. Yeah. But if you let that go a whole week, yeah. they've gone to another open house and have talked to three other realtors now. <laughs> They don't even remember what you look like anymore. <laughs> and it doesn't matter the connection. You have to get in front of them. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to know, or would you like to know, when a home comes on the market that meets your parameters, you'd be the first to know. The minute it hits the MLS, you'll or, know about it. Or one that looks like this house. Yeah. yeah they really yeah. like this one, but there's something about it. You know, would you I like mean, that's, Yeah, the, it, it would, it's amazing when people say to a realtor, no, nah, I don't like this house or, or whatever the thing is. And they just let them walk away. That's crazy. Now you got a chance to sell them something that they want. So then you can go to the MLS and do a notification of certain criteria. So if someone's looking for something, you can go to the MLS and say, put in that criteria. And when that pops up, then you have it pretty much. And you have it sent to them at the same time. No, never, never, well, never, 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 never. I told him this. <laughs> For two and a half I've years. I've done it. Unless it's your family member. <laughs> well, that's what it is. not want your listing order to go to the client. And two reasons. One, it starts sending them stuff that is not what they asked you for. Okay. I don't know why, but Most it does. Most agents do. Colleen is super passionate about this, and I think she's super smart about it. I want to make sure everything do. they see is what they asked for. So if they asked for a backyard that's bigger or fenced oh, or right. whatever, the first time you start, or second or third time they start getting something that's nothing like they asked you for, they think you didn't listen to them. Yeah. Number two, if you only, you look at them first and only send them the really good ones, you send it to them on a text, not in an email. Now you have a conversation going on. People will respond to that text okay. and you, you start talking back and forth. So that's where, why you want to screen them because it really does. Good point. Good. Everybody's not JJ Hodson in Las Vegas, are they? <laughs> that, that's another Great story. Works with a lot of his family members. That's it's a whole story. different ballgame if they yeah. know you and you're yeah. not trying to make them your client. I mean, you know, you just get to because they yeah. love you dearly. Well, that's a okay. different thing. You can do whatever. Be safe. Uh, Colleen, talk about that, will you? Uh, honestly, Catherine? this is why it's really nice to have a lender with you or your partner. But I've done at least half of my open houses by myself. I've only had one situation ever I felt uncomfortable and I was starting to go into the basement with the gentleman. So I've kind of, since that moment, don't go to basements when I'm by myself. They can go look, I mean, anybody can go look at the basement without you. You know, send them down. Don't, yeah. don't go down the stairs yeah. with a man in particular or anybody else for that matter in the basement. But that's my only. Oh, wait, go back to that one so I can just use that for a second. Right, or any... Okay, set goals we're telling you don't. Part Pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> prepare and practice. <laughs> Your prepare and practice <laughs> is. Your prepare and practice is also part of the prepare the stats. In other words, know the house yeah. and have I a and have a lifeline either through the agent or to the seller him, him or herself to answer questions you can't answer. That's probably common sense for me, but turning the lights on, right? Making sure it's bright and yeah. like welcoming, right? Yeah. Is that like extremely some, important yeah. all the lights are on? Get Absolutely. On. Some yeah. people will have a candle going, but I know it's kind of risky because what if the smell is yucky to people? But if the house stinks, it's a, it's a bad thing. Yeah. Do you do you lock the basement doors so nobody comes in in the basement? No, no because people go in and out the basement door anyway. Yeah. yeah. No. If there's a basement, no, we, the, the that's house, a big selling point to the house. You want them to be very The house about. that we're representing right now, we prefer this home. Uh, and this is the brochures that we do on our luxury homes. Uh, we prefer to prep the house ourselves. In other words, she or I will go there before another agent is doing a showing and make sure the lights are on and make sure every the pool covers the pool's uncovered and all those kinds of things. We, we want to make sure that it's just right. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go back and do all, and we'll tell the agent, that don't worry, we'll take it, we'll lock it up. Then we go back and turn off all the lights and lock it up and cover the pool. That's, you know, this is this is the first time we've done that with any listing that we, we've been on top of it, where we are in the house before it's shown and we go back and make sure it's locked up. I think it's a great thing, but it's also- Inconvenient. Well, not, not, not so much. <laughs> inconvenient it's just impractical in a lot of ways yeah. um but this is a very okay so this client for this house i met i'm assigning i met him I, I met him not you know from a real estate thing it was from a loan signing 
Um, but he said to me, can you find, we're renting, can you find us a house? They gave me their criteria and I did just what I told you. I was in a 20 minute text message, him and his wife. Almost a year, I never heard anything from them. Once in a blue moon, like every four months, they might comment, I don't like this one. Or yeah, this one looks nice, but they didn't want to see it. I maybe showed them one house in that year. Nothing, but I just kept doing it, you know, and then they'd come in, I'd check it out if it looked really fancy because that's what they wanted. Mm -hmm. I would send it to them. After a year, guess what? They were ready to move. Their lease was coming up and they called me and I, I sold them their house. Nine months later, it's this house. Nine months later, they just they called me again and out of a whim and said, you know, Colleen, this backyard just isn't working for us. If you could find us a wow house, we want a bigger backyard. We would sell this one and buy that one. They had a seven day old baby. Two day, and, I, and they told me where their parameters were like Alpine, Lehigh, that area, because it works in Lehigh. I went ahead and went a little bit further. Knowing that I'm gonna see them first, I put in vineyard and I went out for, further in all the other directions. And two days later, Clay Winters listing came up and it is on the lake. The biggest wow house I've probably seen that since I've been on real estate. And their price point, had them over there and they're walking around the house like, oh gosh, you know, it was probably gonna be another year, like this other time. Mm -hmm. If we let this go, we'll never find one like this again. So guess what? They bought that house. I, that's what that one. Here's the second time. Second time. Six point yeah. four total between the three houses in sales oh for sticking with somebody for a whole year. Yeah. Just sending them to how many minutes does it take you to send a text? I mean, you know, but they weren't even commenting on the text. Like daily or weekly. Or Whenever a house came up, that Whenever I thought, popped up, and then their like, criteria, like, oh, I just had something pop up, which means your criteria. That's your contact. Yep. And I didn't say anything else because a lot of times, most of the time, they didn't even respond. Mm -hmm. But they didn't and tell then, me, they didn't tell me to stop doing it. And then did you just put the MLS number in the text? If you when you find the house on the on this okay, one. So this. pull up on your phones right now, one eight three seven 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 seven. That's their house that's for sale right now. Once it shows up, there's the share, hmm? like share button. Yeah. Once it shows up, but you have to three seven seven seven. One more seven. Four sevens. Four sevens. It was a jackpot. I told him. <laughs> now, now you have a share button. See the share button right there. Is it Lehigh? No. Um, Vineyard. Draper. Oh, oh, this house. I'm doing a Draper on the very top. Is that this house is Draper? Draper. No. no, don't do that. Okay. Right here on the close. It says enter MLS number in there. Right here. Close. You're up here to just oh, okay. okay. See, this is what Bob are doing is. Yeah. MLS number one eight three seven 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 apply. Yeah. Now you see the house. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so one Joking. eight three seven one more seven. and then up there. Yeah. Yep. Ta da! Okay, yeah. okay so you see down okay. the bottom where it says share. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, share. Yeah. That's what you do. No, no, so you want to do it. Okay. Otherwise, you won't be able yeah. to do it later. So, yeah. yeah. Use your phone for face ID. Because nice. you can set it up so it's face ID. Yeah, so that's, that's much easier. Because no, okay, you're signing in. This may be the single most important thing you're going to learn, honestly, because this is your connection to your clients. So I just have to ask for the first time. So okay. it says enter your comments. Oh, okay. And the Share it with each other. Okay, I'm gonna share it with me so I can send them everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's it. Okay, so now share. It, and then just hit the share and you can type it. Always message. to the message because you want it to be a text yeah. message. So now send it to me. 801. Seven one seven. Five four four three. Eight oh one 
if you don't want to go to it on this time. That's okay. True. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, these are all oh, really there we good go. little tricks that I really appreciate. You sure. bet. Yeah. You bet. I got Catherine. So um, I got yours. Does it cut? Do you? Does it come up on this app for them or some other way? How do they usually see it? I'll show you. Make it. So this is the one Catherine just shared with me. Oh, and has the picture. Yep. Right. And yeah, it should have your information. I think it is. Oh, did you share it? There it is. See, my information is not even on there. So I'm just going to use it. Oh, it awesome. only comes with your. You need to put your picture on your profile. So they're not getting some other agent's information. Right. Oh, cool. So you're coming up. See, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yes, it is. Now look. Okay. So I'll say to you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd love to see it. Did mine come up with my picture? Did you see it? No, I'm going to show you what happened with yours too. Okay. So now in the future, you're going to remember how she showed them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you sent them. Right. Some of my now clients. You're like, I sent them that house. They didn't like it. Yeah. Oh, they or just they weren't responding. Them, or they weren't responding. Yeah. I have one client who will, every once in a while, they'll get a whole bunch from me because it's a whole week. So they've gotten five or six. They'll send me back a text and go, let's see. And they only name them off by street name. I want to go see that, that, that. Well, luckily, because I did all this in my text messages, I can go you back and the look thread. for the street name. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay, so for yours, it just comes up. So interesting, Catherine's came up with her name. I don't know how that happened. Oh, I think we already had a contact. Did we? Yeah. I think we should like, share it. Sure enough, I, I shared it. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so yours I'll have to put in. Make it in I'm going to send you. Do you want these sign in sheets? Yeah. Sure. yeah. Did his come up with his name and picture? Mm -hmm. No, that's why I'm not having him do it right now. Create your contract. There you go. You want to information. Oh, you just mean to your phone, not the MLS. Oh, the MLS. Yes, we should check it out too. Yeah. Yours does, I'm sure. One other thing about signs while we're talking about it um, your yard signs are that you put up while you have your home or property listed are important as well. Uh, our biggest deal this year, we got off of a distant relative of mine, see my face on a yard sign on a, on a uh, piece of property that we have listed up in Alpine, build a lot, but he called me and said, hey, saw your picture. Uh, we're thinking of selling our house. And that led to two deals so far. So we sold their house and we helped them buy another house to live in while they're building a house. Well, you know what? I didn't even think about it to this very moment, too. By having out these signs and having them look so professional and people follow your signs in, I think it gives people a feeling that they like you already before they ever walk in the door. So I probably overcome a lot of challenges just with that. Because obviously it looks like you've been in the business. It does, nothing about this would say, I just got my license this past year. This says, I've been doing this for a long time. And I think there's a lot to be said when people see your signs out week after week after week after week. It gives them confidence in you. And that's why your sparkle has to be. You have to be in that open house knowing no matter what that this is going to be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Even when it's not, because remember what Colleen told you? Three weeks in a row, mm -hmm. one person and I had that sale. Okay. Or a whole year later, I got three sales in less than a year from that same man and it was multi-million dollars. So, and I had no connection to him at all. I met him that one time. So just keep telling yourself, just takes one. Just takes one. She can do out of 13 sales, eight of them were from open houses. And trust me when I tell you, that was a whole lot of open houses stuff. Mm -hmm. But hey, it paid off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, who doesn't want to do 13 on the first year? Mm -hmm. That's that's a decent number. I didn't knock on any doors. Well, I did through open houses with Sheila. Another good idea about taking your lender with you and knock on doors is if him and I go knock on doors, one of us, wants to skip out after about a walk. And we, we don't get very far. <laughs> Sheila doesn't let me skip out. She always goes, oh, grinder, I, right? I think we're going to go a little longer than her. Than her. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I'm another like, I drove all the way out here. We're knocking on more than five doors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if Colleen and I are working the open house together, mm -hmm. uh, then usually she'll sit at the house and I'll go out and pass out these uh, around the neighborhoods 
at least for an hour or two of the open house, unless we're jammed and you know I'll come back. But that that's uh, something you that I that whole thing. That's something that I enjoy neighbors? doing. On the million dollar houses, yeah. Oh, on the million dollar houses. The we, don't, list, we don't make those. We just use the ones yeah. you make for yeah, us. Yeah, that's what I'm houses. talking about. Okay, he'll take these around. Yeah. Because if you fill this, Chin puts it on nice paper. So do you do it for three or? Mm -hmm. Can I have one of these? Yes, you may have that one. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Just remind me what. It I'm a very visual person. Right, what it looks like. And it's I know, I feel bad. I'm glad she had one because I didn't. <laughs> I can get you some anytime. Mm -hmm. You come by my office, I have a whole drawer full of stuff. Um, so you may get this. Well, okay. Go ahead. You want I was just going to get back on track. We're, we're done. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, the rest is, is they're supposed oh, to be. Oh, no. Review. Well, the, there's a couple other things I want to talk about. Yeah, me too. So go ahead. Is that the issue with Trudy on the back of that or she had extra? Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, I need one of those cookies. I'm fading. <laughs> so, um, choosing houses. Um, when you're going to go to another listing agent and ask for one of the listings, if the house has been on the market for more than three weeks, do you know how to look at the history on the MLS? Go look at the history and see if it was under contract. It could have been under contract for two of those three weeks. So then that, I think that's still a fresh listing. Okay. Or... Did they just do a price reduction? Those two items are the only reason I would do a open house with somebody that's been on the market. Been on the market a long time. Longer than three weeks. Because otherwise it's overpriced. Oh, okay. Well, and it not yes, of course it's overpriced because they would have sold it by then. But it's going to be stale. You're not going to get a lot of action. That being said, you could still have somebody following the signs that doesn't know any better. <laughs> but I mean, if you want to get the most bang for the buck, try to stay away from anything older than three weeks. You want to capture them before that, but do check the history because sometimes it's been sometimes it's been on contract for thirty or days or more, and then it comes back. So, yep. well, and on that note, can I say something yes. too? Yes. Um, what I find for me, and I don't know, I mean, these guys are doing like million dollar homes, okay? When people come into a million dollar home, they're doing that because they're their listings, okay? But if you were to choose, if you had like this to this of houses to choose from to do an open house, I would stick in the lower half. And the reason why is because the people that are buying million dollar homes, they walk in with an agent, they walk in pre-qualified, they are right ready to go, 95% of them, right? <laughs> you, you walk into a house that's a first time home buyer, maybe a second home, those people, are just some of them are looksy loose, some of them are just starting their search, some of them are not even educated as to even how to go about the process. So, percentage wise, you're going to end up with a lot more people that are unrepresented and that you can snack. In my personal opinion, that's how I kind of quit doing their big million dollar houses because I didn't get anything out of it because everybody comes in there totally. Qualified they're already set, they're yeah. cash buyers or they've already got their jumbo yeah. loan lined up. So that, anyway, that that's just said, a tip. If that's what's available to you, go do. What is better? One something's better than nothing. Well, and Greg and I on yeah. our last three listings, which were all over a million dollars, we double sided them. So all three of those had an unrepresented. You're kidding me. They walked in there with unrepresented. That's cool. I should have been there. Yeah. And then we went and sold their other house. So there is a mindset here in Utah, it's a very interesting mindset of people that don't want to use um, an agent and yeah. they want to use the listing agent. Uh, Trues were that way. Yeah. We found them at Robinson's house. Yeah. Um, and then we got Jex's at True's house. And we got to be the buyers. So and then we went and listed the Jex's house. Five deals. So now, yeah. You're saying they don't, there's a mindset of people who. There, there are people who are willing to allow you to represent them as a buyer when you're representing the house is for representing the seller. Well, limited agency, the, dual I, agency. the idea is they're willing to do that. They're okay. Yeah. They have trust. They have these trust factors, maybe. Well, no, because they know that the seller is probably getting a better deal. So they they know that puts them on the top of the pile. Blair True uh, came into one of ours, and he didn't. He wasn't the highest offer, so he was kind of mad at us for a while. We. We own a lot of our properties. We'll let people know with the seller's permission what the highest offer is. 
So it kind of gives everybody a, but when, when it gets really far away from the highest offer, that's, so he got mad. But at the same time, he kept staying in contact with him because he had mentioned he had a house to sell. And then he started thinking about it and he thought, well, you know, it was very effective. Maybe that's a good strategy for us. And he let us list his house. Yeah. I called that guy every week. Just, we made a connection. I called him basically, well, every other week. So the for, check for several months. And then he wanted to have a, an actual listing presentation. <clears throat> he had us come over and then he had uh, two other agents. And out of that, he selected us. And uh, that's led to the deals that she's talking about. Yeah. So, so and, and when we do do both sides, you know. We reduce the commission. Well, so it saves, the, but the other people still have a chance to be fat too. Um, but usually the seller, we've done a lot because we stage our houses and we take that out of our commission. Mm -hmm. We've developed a relationship with our seller. So if the offers are exactly the same, the seller will pick the one that we're mm -hmm. getting an extra yeah. bonus, even though it's less than the other agent would, because they want us to benefit. Yeah. And so that's just worked out really well. And then we divide. You can't, you yourself or you yourself can't do both sides. You're going to have to give it to another agent. You could certainly make a deal with the other agent for you know what your cut's going to be of it, yeah. but at that point we stop talking to one another about the deal, and usually whoever's listing it is mine or his. The other one will go to the buyer. Dean says you, yeah. yeah, Dean says you cannot. Okay. The, the Repsy says you can. The Repsy says you can represent both, but the this doesn't like the Dean doesn't like them. There's a lot of reasons for that. Yeah, yeah, and there sure. are, and, and especially as newbies, you guys don't want to get it. That is a whole different, uh, I don't want to say can of worms, that's a whole different set of requirements and procedures and, and uh, documents that it just wouldn't be smart for you at this stage if you're- Well, you can't do it anyway. You know, to do it, so. Um, and you, it won't happen to you if you're doing somebody else's listing anyway, because you're going to be yeah. a buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, okay. Um, so that was that. What do you want to say, Greg? Well, we're we're done with this. Their next thing is, you know, where are you in your uh, in, in in your process of each week? I guess you have certain goals and things that you're supposed to be doing. Um, let's see. Most work on my house done. They open out. Uh, I'm not that we went back to aha, but goals and preparing were knowing putting on here the um automatic notifications and then i can follow up on them to see who is having open houses i mean that to me is the whole you know getting the commitment to well there you go right now it says follow up yeah. and convert the leads how do you put them in your database follow up with them yeah uh, reevaluate the goals as well that yeah, whole goal really, thing again but yeah, but really uh, you know basically it's Good. it's uh, yeah, I mean, again, I, I just want to stress that this is a natural, <laughs> a natural program, a natural process. Don't stress over it, you know, just. Well, and you'll be less stressful if you do all your homework. If you, if yeah. you drove that neighborhood the day before, yeah. you get out there two hours early. When I put out toy signs, it was two hours. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> I would say, and I used to do that by myself. Uh, I would say to myself as I was putting those out, sweating and taking forever, I used to just tell myself, I'm going to make money today. I'm going to make money today. I'm going to make money. And when those signs were jingling in the back of my car, making all kinds of noise, I'd think that's the sound of money. The sound of money. Yeah. And it worked. But just remember, a lot of times it did it. And I never, I try not to. Don't take it personally. Yeah. But I went out and did it again. And when it works, you are skipping all the way home. And, yeah. and I'm telling you, it does. Like anything. Yeah, the more you do it, the better your odds are it's going to work. And the better you get at it. So the recap is basically we initially talked about the benefits of an open house. We all know what those are. The best practices. Do you have any questions about that that we've talked about relative? And Colleen's showing you that app trick and everything. And one of the fun things is, is that when you, if you're talking to somebody in the open house and, and you open the app, well, let's show us for sale around here. Guess what they do? They come over and look at your phone with you. And all of a sudden you're buddies. You know, you, so I don't like you that. have bonded. That's his style. I do that. I don't like I don't like bringing them into the app and showing that at all. You know, I number one, it just drives me nuts every time I see them do it. So that's one of those things where everybody has their own, their own style. Yeah. Works for me, doesn't work for her, but works for the team. 
And you have to find out, figure out your own style. Yeah. And as I sit in some of these classes and you guys have agent after agent after agent, right? They're not putting agents in here that aren't successful. Mm -hmm. All of these agents are successful, but don't ever think you have to do everything exactly like this agent or exactly like that agent or exactly like that agent. You've got to come up with who you are. Yeah, You've that's why I keep saying it's a natural organic process. And if you're thinking about all that stuff, you're going to miss out anyway. So well, this prepare prospect pursue. Hang on, hang on for a sec. One of the greatest things personally, and I've been in another brokerage for KW, is that you have this chance in front of the top agents. You get a chance to sit in and listen to, and that's why it's still beneficial for us to go to other people's night classes because yeah. they'll give you away their pros and wisdom and you write them down. You, you, I, if I don't write it down, I won't remember Me it. Too. And if yeah. you can pick stuff up off other people and do it again a year later, something else will mean something different to you. There is a hundred ways in real estate to make money. Yeah. There's every in this office, you go around and find out how everybody makes their money and everybody's doing it a different way. I don't know a lot of people who are very successful at open houses, um, but I just think they didn't hold it. You know, you'll hear them say, "You could never sell the house you're sitting in." Well, we proved that different. Um, other people say never stage a house. We staged everything oh, wow. from the hundred and sixty thousand dollar trader to uh, we staged everything. I can't imagine why anybody can stage yes. a house. Yes. You don't you look at my picture. Stage everything. 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 And you, you every listing. A stager that brings stuff in. Yep. Then. So every open house, you basically make sure to stage. Well, now again, it's our we're talking about two things. Yeah. 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 This is a whole other class on our listing and what do you do and how do you. You know, the three D's with the seller, you know, deep clean, deep clutter, deep personalize, all those, all those conversations. That's another yeah. class. But you don't even have to have that but, conversation with your seller if you're staging because yeah. the stager does. Stager. So now you're not even in the back. Stager back. will say, gosh, that looks bad. If you say it, they're offended. If the stager tells says them the box up, up the whole room. You're bringing out a third party professional. And so everybody has to agree with that. <laughs> well, it's just nice not to have that conversation. Or this room yeah, smells it really is. Place. But again, if you guys want to talk about staging sometime, we'd be happy to sit down with you. Um, yeah. One of the things, too, there's no downside to any open house you're going to do because you're going to practice. Practice. Yeah. yeah. Um, but as you hone your skills, I would look at the pictures of the open house and try to, you know, try to, that's why you, you want to set the alert on it and you want to go after the one. Pick houses doing. you like. Well, and priced right. Yeah. Look around the neighborhood. Listen to what the competition is right now. One of the, one of the things I again, this is I got really smart this year for some reason. <laughs> you got really smart. Yeah. I used to do price people's houses off of what the CMA, what an appraiser would look at a house. I don't do that anymore. I now price people's houses off what the competition is now. So let's say we're going to list this between six fifty and seven hundred. I look and see what's available close by. You know, in the maybe two surrounding cities at that price point because that buyer is looking at the same houses. Yep. So unless my house beats whatever price point that is, my house isn't gonna sell. And I show my sellers that. I set it up like two weeks before and start sending those, that listing alert and I'll start sending those houses. So then they get an idea, oh yeah, mine doesn't look this good. And I've gotten people all the way down from 800. She went down, what did she, what did Grimms list that house for? 650. Six, six, Try to have that conversation sold with it for the six, seller without seven, giving them a lot of proof. So, but well, well we've months. gotten smarter because of, of the shift that's taken place. Homes were going up so quickly. You still had to price them right. And we still, you had to the, her point, you still had to know what was going on in that market. Yeah, if you and price it too thing, high. And the, yeah, in a shifting market, the same thing's happening. And so if you look at a house, if you go back to the CMAs and say, well, this sold in March, that doesn't apply today in the slightest. Yeah two different deals so we've had to get smart in that sense of wait a minute we got to be more current with exactly what's going on in the market okay just a couple of things prepare um here's one thing that i did on this home that we've shown you the seller mentioned to us that across the street is this empty lot kind of some junk in it and stuff you know what's going on there he said there's going to be a city park well, well take one type this, that when we bought the house, the sellers at that time told us that was going yeah, to be a park. Now we're listing the house. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I don't know if there's going to be a park over there. Before we tell anybody that, maybe. So Greg went right down to City Hall and went to the planning department. And this is what they gave him. So you don't want to be telling anybody, especially if you're the listing agent or even holding yeah. somebody's open house, 
if something's something unless you know it is, yeah. unless you want to be buying a park. So I went down to planning and zoning and got this information, then went over to Parks and Rec and found out, yeah, here's the name of it. It's scheduled to be completed in 2004. Right now, the city's soliciting designs from different companies that, do, that do the parks. Uh, and uh, uh, per the Draper Planning Commission, neighbors will have the opportunity to review the designs in an open house prior to acceptance of the build-out plan. And it's scheduled to be completed in 2004 or 24, 2024. So, you know, this is we made copies. This is a handout that's that we give to people at the house. Well, that's kind of cool because you can stand right here on the porch of this house and look at this empty lot and say, guess what? There's never going to be houses there. That's going to be a fantastic park. Mm -hmm. That's a good selling point. Yeah. You better be sure it's true. Yeah. So that's why I went <laughs> went down to the because we'd heard this, you know, for months that there's going to be a park. So that's why I went down to the city to make sure. So that's part of your preparation, okay? Uh, the prospecting, I think we, sh we can say that takes place both within the open house and as you're knocking doors in the neighborhood. And then pursue, that's simply the follow-up that Colleen's talking about to establish a, a, a text thread with them and stay on top of it. One and thing I, about these sheets that as we've done it, I think that um, it's almost easier to say the seller would like this information than it is to say, I need this information about you. So I don't know if that's a little white lie or what, but the seller wants to No, because the seller, the seller wants seller to hear wants about to know who's yeah. been through the house. Well, and, and I'm glad you, you said know. that because that's a heck of a point I did not even write down to tell you is when you're doing other people's listing um, things, within an hour of that open house quote being done, send that listing agent on a text. This many people came through, and just yep. give them a little bit of feedback because they want to know. And, and if they have to chase you down to ask you, it's just kind of a yeah, be be right when that thing ends, be on the on the on you the wanna, spot. You want to be the person that they'll call. Trust yeah. Me. Yeah. You it's give them a deal. full report on what happened yep. at that open house. So that part's true. And it's then they can go back to their you see full years. report, mostly just was someone interested? If they if there's someone that's interested, here's their name, whatever. No, give them a sense of how many people how came, many people through. came through. What kind of feedback yeah, you're kind of getting feedback. on the house? Okay, what kind of feedback? Okay. Somebody, somebody, you may be getting feedback, uh, some negative thing about the house that if you pass back to them, then they'll correct for future okay. open houses or all the positive things about the house. One time I had an agent that I was doing an open house for called me and wanted the agent's name, somebody who said they were going to be sending over an offer. So if you give that feedback, just know you should probably have it noted somewhere on what that agent's name is because they may want to follow up on it. A lot of agents, especially if they don't get one. My thing is really, if they're going to write me an offer, they're going to write me an offer. <laughs> Do I really want to have an offer from somebody who's not sure they want to buy this house and tie it up for a week? But I'm sure there's other agents that have done it, been very successful. So they're doing it for a reason. So I just, I, I didn't have the information. So I'm just telling you that. If you pass on that kind of information, you don't have to give it to them because they probably don't need it. I wouldn't want it, but you should have it in case they call you and ask you for it. Otherwise, I wouldn't share something like that that they might want back. But if they sign in, if somebody signs in your, comes in with, with their agent, their agent usually signs your sheet. Just with somebody please sign the sheet, usually the agent will go for it. Yeah. They don't want you to have their client, their client's information. But those, those people that come through belong to you. So and let's you talk have, about that for a second. Some an unrepresented buyer come you they they've done this, they've checked, no, they're not represented. Okay, what do you what do you do? What do you mean? Well, we need to well if we make a make a connection, send them a follow-up. We'd like to can I show you something? Can I help you with what you're searching for? Something okay. Is that what you do? What if what if they want the house that you're representing right there? Want them right off? Oh, they're like, yes, I love this house. And you're not represented. I can help I can help you write up an offer. And if they say, we don't want an agent to help us, then, then they, need to, say? they need to contact the listing agent yeah. and they can be unrepresented. Yeah. Now that listing agent should take care of you one way or another. And, and you, know, you might even have that conversation with somebody before you hold their open house. If an unrepresented buyer comes in and wants to- Can I pass it on to you? Unrepresented. How will that look for the commission for me? 
you could have that up front. Mm -hmm. it, it's such an anomaly. I why would you ask anomaly. them why do you not want to be represented? Well, I, that was the point I was going to come to. You can always say to them, give them the advantages of being represented. You, you don't negotiate directly with the seller. I do that for you. I prepare all the documents for you. I review the contracts and all of the addendums and other things that we'll be doing so that you are completely educated about this process and this home and what we're doing. And that's what I do for a living. I'm trained. I've, I've gone to school. I go to classes all the time. I deal with people all the time uh, that, are, that, are, have been, that, that are not represented, but there are so many good reasons why you should be. This is probably the biggest financial decision you'll make in your life. Would, would, would you, you know, uh, would, would you do, would you prepare an estate without a lawyer? You know, well, any of those kinds I of things. I think that most of the time when people, yeah. it'd be good to find out why they yeah. don't think they want to be represented because most of the time people think they're going to pocket the 3%. They're not going to pocket the 3%. And they've got to realize, you got to let them know, you know, you're just doing yourself and you're just doing yourself damage. You're not going to get a better deal just because you're not represented. That agent is going to keep all the money. It's already in contract that they're selling it for 6%, mm -hmm. right? And so people come up with this idea in frugal Utah County that they are somehow going to save 3% on the purchase of the home just because they're not represented. Well, I think a great way to, to explain that to, to a buyer is the seller has already signed a contract with the listing agent that they're gonna pay whatever percentage they said. And they're offering a certain percentage to the buyer's agent. If they don't use a buyer's agent, the seller still, I mean, the listing agent still, still gets paid. Listing agent still pays the 6%. Mm -hmm. In most cases, they, they certainly are welcome to negotiate that down, but that's how contractually they are obligated to still pay the full amount. Now, remember, so there, there's people agent. that are, there are people that are very smart and have done this a lot, like true. Like Blair. And he knows it can be negotiated down. So he knows what you're saying is not necessarily the case. He also knows there's certain advantages to him. So yeah, this is one of the most sophisticated. Did he let you write up? Know, but he wants an agent. He, did he let you write up that offer for yep. his kids? Yep. So then he did allow an agent to do it in the end. You actually wrote it. You physically wrote it. Put it in the I file. I did. I did. Okay. Let um, me go for a cookie for his. Yeah. Also keep in mind. Um, I wrote up the offer for his ballroom dancing. If you yeah. have several people who want to write an offer on an open house, it can't happen. You can only write it for one buyer. Mm -hmm. You can't represent two buyers. Kind of conflicts this. Oh, I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. But then can you like send them another agent's information to get some? You want to have a or? yes, you want to get you want to find it. We're gonna to have to find out from Dana about the referral part of it because there must we, be a we, way. We, we haven't really run into that, so we haven't had to do it. We've come it. darn close. We come big, well, we did come very close. We've come darn close, close just recently. Yeah, yeah, where we, we were the listing agent and we yeah. divided, and he was gonna be the buyer's agent, and then we had somebody else that wanted to write for a buyer's agent. Both of us are going, Yes, and that's who I should have called because I went to ignite with them. <laughs> so yeah. You guys will remember each other forever from this <laughs> little experience of yeah. going through these classes. He was in my class. So how has your thinking changed? What ideas or mindsets were new to you? Can I say number one? Don't be afraid of open houses. Embrace them. <laughs> uh, what do you feel differently about than you did before we started this hour, an hour and a half ago? Either one of you. Or... Give them a minute to answer. Yeah, I, for me, the opportunity to, because I didn't realize this, is the, the you're, you're uh, not just selling the house, but other leads. That I didn't really realize that. But that's a really big part of it, getting other leads. But back to your mindset, you're there to sell, to represent yeah. the house. Yes. And the other will come. And the other will come. So well, that's what I wasn't thinking come. about. Yeah. That's the thing that was different that I wasn't thinking about at first. When I first came to this class. And I was kind of the opposite. I was thinking, oh, yeah, I can get leads from open, but also I was thinking about leads. Well, the listing agent out to make sure we're there for them. Well, and one of, one of our listings just recently, we had like three listing appointments after the open house. So we were scoped out and they loved the way we were doing the open house. And they want us to come over and talk to them about selling theirs. So you don't realize how often you're being interviewed. And 
if all you're doing is trying to pick up more buyer leads, that person is not going to come near you to listen to their house. If you represent that person, the rest of it will fall in line. That is such a good point. If you're representing the house, the people that are thinking about hiring you want to see how you would represent their house. Very good point. Um, I did have one note I just glanced at. Oh, I think one of the best things you can do right now is start going to other people's open houses too. You will pick up what works well, what you want to copy, what doesn't work very well, what you feel kind of made you a little put off. Go do. I, I would do, I would spend a Saturday, Saturday morning, afternoon, whatever, and go do Scoring. three, four, five. And you're going to see a pattern right away. On so I told you I just dropped in an open house one day and I ended up getting the buyers. <laughs> <laughs> she was very bold. You, you, you will also see the difference between a staged and an unstaged home. Okay. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't get hung up too bad uh, when you're doing open houses. That aren't yours. Yeah. Well, and whether or not they're staged. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's in a good location, and you put out your signs, no, they don't know what that house looks like on the inside. And look at all those leads you'll get, but that house isn't going to work for them. You could certainly send them another one, find out why it didn't work for them, and can you put them on the list? Yeah. So yeah. I wouldn't get too hung up on that. You, it will take away a lot of your traffic, but if it's priced right, you're still going to have a lot of traffic. But I, I, what I'm saying is you'll just get a sense when you walk into a staged home, a well-staged home versus an empty house. I mean, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll, yeah. you'll see the difference. Um, how will your behavior okay what are you gonna do have you bought signs yet no, I with your own picture on them so do you use like the same sign like with your picture and your phone number like do you get multiple of those or do you just do open like 20 different customers no i have 16. all those yeah. all the same okay. all the same oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. yeah yeah yep i mean you do what you can do until you, you if, if you can't afford it then just the generic How open house sign. Signs? Did you have someone design them for you? Who yeah, the goodies did. You? The guy that did them. Those run about, what, 25 bucks or something? Yeah, something like that. And then okay. for the sign, and then the stand itself is another, it's about $50 there probably. This is my least favorite stand. Um, That's why Greg signs on it. It looks like there's a little flag holder or something over there too. Yeah, yeah, that, it's on mine too. Yeah. These are bigger and wider, so they stand up a yeah. way better. This the one, I, I've only bought the white ones. Colleen had these, so I've oh, kept some of my garage too. Yeah. car. Some of them I buy at Ucar, some of them I buy. You got these done from where? Oh, these are, they're the same, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. These the are, these the, are the signs themselves we've had they're made at the same place. Oh, that's what I mean. The sign holders are the same, just different colors. No, no, this, one this one's much base. smaller. This was a little flimsier. Mm -hmm. This one will fall down in the wind much more. And and oh, actually, Greg has. So they some. have two different styles there to buy. Yeah. Well, it depends on where you. And yeah, it depends on when you buy it. Oh yeah, I didn't see this one doesn't spread. Like Separated, it didn't make look the same. Yeah. To me. Yeah. 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 And Greg has actually some white ones that snap in the ground, which is even better, I think. On a windy day. <laughs> but <clears throat> anything worse. Keep your rock on the ground and that thing stays up just fine. Well, I mean, with the wind, it should blow that. Right. Swing but still, you get a real strong wind. Eagle yeah. Mountain is notorious. Oh, uh, and very careful where you put your signs. Yeah, so that's like the stress. Don't put them on the sidewalk, though. Cops will steal them. Um, don't put them on the sidewalk. <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good question. Where do you, where can you, should you? Wonderful to, if you're going to put them up. Yeah, okay, so you get a corner house. You think that that doesn't belong to anybody. Trust me when I tell you that corner house thinks that belongs to them. Okay. We, 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 we go knock brochures. on the door and talk to the to the one of your brochures and go up to the door and say, now you now you have a conversation. Would you like to come to open house today? I'm having mm -hmm. an open house right down the street. Would you mind if I put a brochure sign? Mm -hmm. I have only had one person ever tell me no. Okay. If they're not home, leave the brochure on the door. Mm -hmm. At least they know you tried to contact them. Um once, you won't name who did it, did not ask for permission, and she took my sign and threw it in the trash can. And when I came back, she saw me looking for my sign and came out and told me what's what. Yeah. So we went to Neater's and got her a basket and apologized for not asking. And again, it was nowhere near her, her yard. I don't even think it was part of her. So it was kind of like the city sidewalk and then this thing. Maybe she took care of it. I don't know. I just know. Don't cause yourself. She is very bad. 
And, and there's a corner over here where it's Osmond's, it's on the main street on State Street, where Osmond's real estate is, it's now called something else. I put one on their corner and not realize it was Osmond real estate. And they put my sign in the trash too. <laughs> Other than those, I have never lost a sign, but I'm very careful where they I stick them. Try not to are there certain cities that are more sticky about it? You cannot put signs out on the main drag in Eagle Mountain or Saratoga. There are other they need to be on private property and you have to have permission from that owner. Yeah, that has the police officer not I don't know how he would know if he did. Church is a great place to stick a sign, they don't care. Um, Walmart, I used at the end of theirs. I ha have never had problems except for over here in Alpine. They took it to customer service and I got it back. Just, you know, most businesses don't mind. Most busy corners don't. Most people will give you permission. Just don't block the sidewalk. It's way better to ask permission than then they. Well, it's another opportunity to find out. To Maybe talk to somebody. Yep. Yeah. 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 Where did you guys get yours as the sign for personal? You can take a picture of that. If you talk to Goody Signs, just tell me what it made the same. And so I'll send you the. It's Goody Signs. It, it, Goody's Signs. Yeah. It, yeah. And and a lot of sign companies actually have graphic artists that can help you put something yeah. together. If you just give them your logo, your picture, whatever. Eric at Eric at Goodies. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll send this to you guys. Uh, that's all i have sure well it's been uh thank you it's been, I, i've made a lot of notes today more than i sometimes do even though i've had good insight what are your phone numbers again here got it so would you align with like i went to open house with you and like just watched sure. you for one sure that's a very good idea yeah i, I mean not, not that I, I i may do that as well but that's one thing I need to probably ask more is that if I can follow people, yeah. you know, just see what they do. Yeah. You don't even help. need to do this if you just take a Saturday afternoon and go check out. Okay. Just go check out. That's what yeah. you said in your last comment. Yeah. Go see what people do. You'll learn. You're not going to see me do anything. In fact, you're probably going to see me do a lot less than you think I do. Yeah. I greet them. My biggest thing, honestly, when I was looking for my own house is the realtor talked too much. Don't hover. I just wanted her to be quiet because I was trying to put my furniture in the room, see if my dining room table was going to fit. I didn't want her to talk to me about what I was doing that afternoon. Or I can see it's a kitchen. I can certainly see it's a bedroom. I don't need those two things pointed out. So I just needed her to be quiet. So I show houses very different than most realtors. I'm just just, just take it off of that. I stay close enough so they can ask questions in any of the rooms, and um, and we usually regroup. So I handle my open houses the same way, really. I have a guy, I have a sign place in Spanish, the creative sign for Spanish. Yeah, I mean, ask at the desk, Molly, give you, Molly has I mean, everybody does, does different, there are signs, we have to go pick these up, whoever, one of the providers actually delivers them right here to the front desk, so just ask Molly who like, it is. Just like this, I like to just the, you have your name, your picture, your phone number, and yeah. open. I think those are the main, the yeah. main things. I'll tell you, my husband, who is a uh, uh, magazine editor it always says to me whenever I'm designing my signs, he goes, What's the most important thing on your sign? Besides that, that arrow, the most important thing on that sign is your phone number. So make sure your phone number is big. Yeah. Um, the rest of it is just the arrow. I mean, wherever the arrow is, we went through quite a lot of signs where we figured out the best arrow that people yeah. could see from far away. And, and all of our yard signs, we do the reflective signs. They cost more, but they look better. And, and oh, there's a reflective pe pe option. People see them at night. These you don't need reflective. Oh, right. I'm saying our yard, yard signs, signs, we do oh. reflective signs. Okay. Yeah. So they kind of made us look jaundice, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys give and take whether or not you want to sparkle at night. Yeah. Uh, did you, you, see you have night. a good sign guy in Spanish Park? Well, yeah, I, I've used them for my business and other things. They're called creative sign. Would you send me that contact? Uh -huh. Yeah. Who somebody has my phone? There you go. Goody <laughs> got a little busy with. Family. And ask ask Molly. I, I know the, the, the in front the I see signs delivered there all the time. I don't know who they're from, but it's worth asking and yeah. seeing what their prices are and stuff. Okay. Well. Yeah, you can put have, your name in my you contact. Have my contact info. Yeah, I will send it to you. You can just add it. Did you know you can do this with your your phone if you go like that? And you can share your information. I'm happy to come and do it. Somebody show me that one day. I'll send it to you. So if you end up getting one and you want to 
give me a call. Even if I can't do it, I can make the flyers for you. Okay. So even if I can't join you, I could still do the flyers for you. Okay. okay. My daughter is Sorry. freaking out. She has a choir dress she needs to order for summer. Yeah, we're we're done. Okay. Thank you, Sheila, for joining us. Welcome. Yeah, I did go through the list. At least you introduced this. Yeah, yeah. So I will. I'll. You'll see me in and out. But these guys I work with a lot, so they want me to come. So you said you can send someone your contact information. Yes, you all you do is you go to contacts. 